welcome to the Mayo Clinic Ophthalmology Podcast. It's here. We have a podcast. We do. We did it. I love this look. It's, Isn't it great? It is. We're fancy. We've got a nice background. Well, welcome everyone. We are so excited to talk with you. My name is Dr. Andrea Tooley. I'm an oculoplastic surgeon here at Mayo Clinic. And I'm Dr. Eric Bothan, pediatric ophthalmology and adult strabismus here at the Mayo Clinic. We're going to be your hosts for this podcast. We are so excited to journey through the land of podcasting together. We have tons to learn, but I think it's going to be great. I must admit, your spark and expertise in this field is something I need to lean into. I love talking. I love visiting and learning in the scope of healthcare about what everybody does and what their interests are. But you seem to have a way of, of bringing these sort of opportunities online in a way that I'm excited to start this journey with you. Well, that's very nice of you. I love connecting with people. I've been making YouTube videos since I was in med school interviewing people because it's, I'm fascinated by everyone's story and journey. And I think there's a huge space for this in ophthalmology. We're really excited to kind of showcase what Mayo Clinic is offering, but I'm most excited about connecting with people mm -hmm. across our field and outside of ophthalmology. There's all kinds of potential opportunities. There's new podcasts popping up all the time. And so I'm just excited to add our voice to this space. And I think I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah, I agree. I remember po a podcast in the past and, and uh, online material of you baking a cake. <laughs> and I, I remember it was fun just learning about another aspect of a person's life and, and how that complements. But I just, I see these episodes as layers of a cake that each one can have a different flavor, a different style, different, you know, it's um, a different tune to them. And we all, we learn from it. And along the way, some probably icing and sparkle that'll make it fun. Um, but it'll be an enjoyable journey as we put these together. Oh, a delicious cake. I yes. love it so much. Oh man. Well, start just kind of tell us about you, who you are, so that everybody listening can know kind of who we are. We're both going to be here for these podcast episodes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes one of us, most of the time, both of us. But um, who are you, Dr. Bothan? So yes, er Eric Bothan, I grew up actually regionally at the Mayo, uh, near the Mayo Clinic. You are so Minnesota. I am so Minnesotan. For the, for the listeners, Dr. Bothan. My Bothen. medical record number is one of the oldest in the department because I was born here. Oh, that's so great. Um, yeah, my mom was a nurse here. And so I learned early on a little bit of the Mayo culture, um, but then ventured elsewhere. I went up, um, did my medical school training at the University of Minnesota. Uh, did residency there too. So I certainly enjoy cheering for the Gophers. <laughs> I did a fellowship in pediatric ophthalmology. I think my interest in ophthalmology um, really stemmed from an interest in people and interest in kids. And uh, I spent a year internationally doing some work in general surgery uh, in Zimbabwe and Tanzania and Pakistan. And during that time, an ophthalmologist came over and said, you've done enough C-sections and uh, open wound repairs. Uh, let me show you a little bit about eye care. And so I did my first cataract um, from start to finish extra cap as a medical student and came home saying, I'd like to do ophthalmology and ended up finding a way to uh, do residency and then married that with my interest in peds and did a fellowship at the University of Michigan mm -hmm. in Ann Arbor. I came back to uh, Minnesota and started at the University of Minnesota and enjoyed being comprehensive pediatric ophthalmology, adult strabismus mixed in, and my forte became pediatric cataract. So I've had some opportunities. I think we'll talk about multi-center trials in these podcasts maybe at some point. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a big part of my career, the infant aphaca treatment study and other aspects of that. I've had some basic science research in metabolic disease, mucopolysaccharidoses, um, a lot of complex strabismus interests in adult and pediatric care. And then along the way, I've had always this sense of whether or not it would be a beautiful thing to land back in more rural Minnesota, but also here at the Mayo Clinic mm -hmm. and had an appreciation for the teamwork and the culture of this place. Yeah. So six years ago, it became an option to come home. Um, the place looks differently in some ways. The place feels differently in a different with wearing a different hat. But I very much enjoyed coming back to Rochester in a similar fashion to what I had at the University of Minnesota. But um, picking up the three shields of clinical research um, and, edu and education um, here at Mayo and within my realm. I'm also the quality lead for our department. And so that's been an enjoyable journey. Mayo is big into quality metrics and outcomes. So I appreciate learning and, um, and sharing in that arena. 
And then I've enjoyed, so I've enjoyed being here. My kids have all sort of starting to graduate. I have a new interest in our, my local family farm. We might talk about someday down the road. It's oh, been yeah, a neat gotta thing hear about to the farm. be planted back in the area where I grew up. So that's my niche. I've certainly loved being here for six years. I've enjoyed the journey along the way here. I want to, I want you to share now next, but we're going to talk a little bit about what makes engaging in podcasts, telling stories mm -hmm in a healthcare profession, uh, a beautiful thing. And so uh, through this discussion as we start, let's come back on that. But I know, we, or we know, <laughs> get to hear your story. Oh man, well, that's a tough act to follow. You've got such a great story and you wear so many hats. I am really excited to have these conversations with you because you have so many different aspects that you can draw from your, your quality and admin interests, which is really interesting for practice management and things that I don't know a lot about, all of your global work and how you view medicine from a global vantage point. All of this is so pertinent now to kind of the, the medical landscape. And I think there's all kinds of people we can talk to, but your viewpoint and your expertise is it's just tremendous. So it's great. We love having you here at Mayo, obviously. I was a resident here at Mayo when you came back on faculty, and now it's full circle. We get to work oh, together, man. which is, is really, it's really fun. Gift. Yeah, it is a gift. My story is somewhat similar to yours in that my first experience with ophthalmology was with a kind of global um, vantage point as well. I was in high school and I was introduced to Orbis, which is an amazing organization. They do just outstanding things for blindness worldwide, education, surgery. And I actually got to go on a trip with Orbis to Peru when I was 17. And that sealed the deal for me, 100%. It's like, this is what I'm doing with my life. I want to do ophthalmology, 100%. And um, I kind of was laser focused on ophthalmology through college and med school. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. I love all medicine. There were lots of things interesting to me, but nothing touched ophthalmology. The surgery, the kind of instant gratification, and helping patients, potential for global work, all that. Loved it so much. And I somehow landed here at Mayo Clinic for residency. No way did I think I was going to end up here at all. And it's just amazing how things work out. I, I did a video on serendipity. I think lots of people in medicine feel that kind of serendipitous mm -hmm. path in, in how their, their journeys and lives have turned out. And I feel that so strongly. So I ended up here at Mayo for residency. Loved it. Um, decided on oculoplastics, which also I would have never guessed. I didn't know anything about plastics when I was in med school. And I didn't think about plastics initially in residency, but it's perfect for me. I, I really love oculoplastics. I left Mayo and went to New York for my fellowship. I did the combined ASOPERS fellowship in New York where you are, it's a multi-institutional fellowship. So you're at Cornell, Columbia, NYU, Manhattan Ioneer, do some private practice work as well. So I got a huge breadth of oculoplastics in the city. But like you, I longed to return to the rural countryside. And uh, I was already planning our farm uh, for our last few months in New York City. We, my husband and I bought a little hobby farm out here in Minnesota. Perfect. And yep, <laughs> we have six, 16 acres and chickens and horses and want to grow all our own food. And that's, that's the life. Yep. And it's so great. So we came back to Mayo in 2020. And I um, do a lot of things here, wear a lot of different hats. I'm the associate residency program director. I love being involved with the residents and education, do a lot of stuff with Academy. I'm, I'll be the 2023 um, Young Ophthalmology Chair, the Yo Committee Chair, starting next year, which is super exciting. I love all the work I've done with Academy. And I'm um, involved in women ophthalmology and some other things here with oculoplastics. So it's great. It, like Life is so great, all the different aspects that we can – kind of put into our hat. I just, I just love it. So that's me. That's life here. That's, and you've been a wonderful shooting star early in your career already here. And it's, you know, this podcast um, is part of that trajectory of trying to connect um, our excitement about being here at Mayo with expertise that we've had in our own careers, but also appreciating of what we have together with the people around us. Yep. Um, we have a new chair in Dr. Sophie Bakri, yep. and she has brought um, a new insights and perspective and, and opportunities, including um, this um, this podcast. Can you share a little bit about, yeah. because you, you, you were a little bit of the idea maker behind this. And so what's your take on how this all started and where we might be going? Yeah, well, this was 
Absolutely. Dr. Bakri's brainchild. She's our chair. She's a huge leader in ophthalmology. She's fantastic. And we'll have her on for episodes and uh, and drill her about how she thought about a podcast. But she wanted to be able to connect. And really so much of Mayo Clinic, our philosophy too, is bringing different fields of medicine together, bringing different um, consultants together. That's what Mayo Clinic's all about. And we see that for ophthalmology too, being able to connect really worldwide and have these conversations. And we want to showcase what we're doing here at Mayo, of course, but I'm I'm more excited about connecting with other people really a- across the globe in ophthalmology, cool stuff, and even outside of ophthalmology, medicine in general. And really, as listeners, we're so interested in hearing what you guys want to hear and what you think. So please send us your feedback, send us what you want to hear, because we're excited to bring in these uh, different leaders that kind of across medicine and, and talk about all, all of it. And with Dr. Bakri kind of leading the charge, I think we're in really good hands. Yeah, yeah going to that cake analogy, I think the, the bottom <laughs> layer is just celebrating the ophthalmology community we have here and sharing stories and expertise, research, teaching opportunities. Yeah. And then you think broadly around the house of medicine here, but then as you're sharing across the country and around the globe, there's just perspective that we have the opportunity of sharing those stories at the microphone here on these podcasts. And it'll be a, certainly a thrill to to, to be part of that. Yep, you're going to be a great storyteller. Well, we'll try. <laughs> I, you know, it's interesting. When I think back of before COVID, oh, man. we used to sit in conference rooms and have grand rounds together. I miss it so and much. I think we all do. And I, it's, when I think of what makes academic medicine special, mm-hmm. it's this community you're immersed in that's churning that's compelling, that's fueling, that gives opportunities, that gives creative ideas. Yep. And the season we're in is one of, of just reflection and change. Um, but also I, we, in that reflection and change, we thinking of our ways of doing it differently, mm-hmm. but yet telling the stories and, and coming back to that vibrancy of what we had together and I hopefully go back to soon. Yeah. Um, I'm just as a conversation point, just as a storytelling point. I think we all look back on what, how we engaged with people outside of our specialty or around us and thought, oh, that was just such a compelling moment. Can you think of one grand rounds history or through training medical school that you can look back on and go, the vibrancy of those conversations were rich. Uh, is there, can you think of an individual or a, a, a case example of one where you just sat back and went, this is why I love being in academic healthcare? Oh, that, I love that. That's such a great, great point. Really, I mean, what you're getting at is this is why we all love meetings, mm-hmm. right? Well, we love getting together, sharing ideas, and then leaving truly inspired and awestruck. There's a few moments that really stick out to me that I'll never forget. Some in med school, I had some really incredible attendings in medical school. Um, One particular radiology attending who had the most beautiful uh, and really robust analogies for life inside of medicine, truly kind of a narrative medicine experience. Some of his lectures were that. Um, But then just hearing, hearing from leaders in ophthalmology, especially as a trainee, you know, I'm, I'm, I've only been faculty for two years. So a lot of this I'm thinking too, how I've experienced things as a trainee. Just for example, listening to George Bartley speak. And these are the types of people, at least for me, I always leave those conversations thinking, I want to be better and read more and do more projects and study harder and know more things. And it, you, mm-hmm. you feel so invigorated. And you're right though, times are changing where Hopefully, we can get some of that through podcasts. Exactly. And there's all kinds of media. Even reading like Ruth Williams' articles in INET every month leave me feeling so inspired. You know, there's all kinds of ways we can communicate and work to, work together and reach out and connect. And so I hope that the podcast is a way to feel that. I certainly feel that way about the podcast I listen to now. I don't know if you do this, but if ever I find somebody that I really like, I um, just voraciously consume everything they've ever done. So I'll just search their name in podcasts and listen to all the podcasts they've ever done (laughs) or YouTube them and watch all of their YouTube videos uh, just because I want to know that person better. And so uh, I love the podcasts that are currently out there. And I think we can hopefully contribute to that and have create some meaningful storytelling, like you say, some yeah. glitter on the cake. I, uh, it is. I, I think back in my examples of, of moments where you think this inspired me. Yeah. Um, 
you know, here at Mayo, I remember um, uh, you say George Bartley, but um, Jim Garrity, uh-huh. just sitting around grand rounds and, and having dialogues and on levels that had nothing to do with your specialty, mm-hmm. but just churned your a- a academic um, and, and clinical care interests. Um, Bob Knobloch mm. was a, a doctor, a retina specialist. He, Knobloch syndrome was named after him. And I love sitting in grand rounds and just hearing his stories, helping him, just perspectives of his of his memory over decades of clinical experience and sharing them in ways that, that um, yeah, compelled and fueled our desire to do the same for our patients. So I love the opportunity that this podcast might bring, that we get to be inspired yep. by the people that come and tell their stories, that be enlightened over what they're doing or what they might do, and be encouraged in this season where we're not all together that we can be together through things like this. So I love this opportunity that you've helped to, you know, spearhead. Well, thanks. And we get to share. We get to share it. I know. Well, thank you, everyone, so much for listening. We hope you enjoy this kind of intro podcast. We're so excited to share this journey with you. Please uh, subscribe to the podcast as you can. Listen along the way. Reach out to us with any of your comments. We're eager to hear from you. And we will talk to you next time. Thanks so much. Thanks. See you soon. You can find all episodes of the Mayo Clinic Ophthalmology Podcast on our website. Thank you for listening, and we definitely look forward to sharing more 